The Legacy of Wisdom Project provides educational and inspirational tools that will help our aging population to lead better lives, responsible, engaged and empowered. The project spans five major themes of aging, and we present here a glimpse of responses to a few of our pressing questions. How do I find my mission to feel complete and fulfill my life's potential? Listen to your inner tuning fork. I think everybody has in them uh, the equivalent of a, of a tuning fork that resonates when they're doing things that they're supposed to be doing. That, that will just perk them right up. To me, the place that I need to get to is to finally get to that core self that I came into the universe with, that it's taken a lifetime of, of, of wearing and playing different parts in this life to finally realize what my own truth is. We live lives in which everything works to discourage reflection. And I think the way to find out what you're going to do, what your mission is, how to make yourself useful to the world, is to take some time for reflection. So when a person looks back and says, let me see what my part in the universe was, I have to sit in the presence of the one to whom I can't lie to whom I have to be transparent and in the presence of that, and I don't even want to say being, you know, in the presence of that to which I am transparent, I have to, I have to do this homework. So I think those are, are two things, the, the investment in, in service to others uh, and the letting go of, of clinging to a, a more rigid sense of, of who I am, who this person is inside this skin. Um, uh, and that is, the mission is uh, identifying with the soul because identifying with soul makes dying much easier. What elements should I consider as I think about my lifestyle choices for my aging years? You have to discover that you are on a new, a new territory. You're a pioneer in a new space. Um, and the wisdom that you're going to have in that space is going to have a different quality from the wisdom that your great-grandmother may have had because you're going to be in that space having lived 50, 60, 70, 80 years of the most rapid social change that the human species has ever gone through and you're going to be in that time period active, not just sitting saying wise things but able to go out and affect the direction of society. And believe me, we're just in time. <laughs> There's plenty to be done. And so they're not looking at a, whole new, at a whole new life that they're trying to build. They're trying to say, how can I further my values using my skills and background and resources in the next step. So they're not having to jump off of a bridge, they're, they're basically just moving down the road one more step and, and it's a matter of evolving into, and most people adapt pretty gradually to things, so they're just evolving into the next them. Uh, I think most of us have the experience that uh, it's very enriching to um, be within diversity whether it's diversity of, of age or, or gender or, or culture or, or race, uh, it's enlivening. What about the possibilities of uh, living in, in purposeful designed communities that don't 
age segregate, but perhaps provide an opportunity to interact with people who share an interest in particular creative activity or a particular intellectual activity. I think that the most important thing is is that we need to be mirrors for each other. Those of you know, you know, it's like twelve step. That we understand who we are. When we really begin to reflect that in each other, then I think that a younger generation will begin to see that there's an energy here. There's a self-respect. There's purpose. There's mission. To use your language. So it is not just uh, a matter of an elder sort of sitting on a seat of wisdom. But um, how can we actually engage um, our elders in uh, active um, social service projects, whether it is um, uh, sitting in um, a, a vigil room for a dying person or working in the prison system or going down to the Salvation Army and um, helping to move food out to the homeless? Um, the, this uh, sense of altruism builds, uh, if you will, confidence in um, people as they age and, and gives a, a, a kind of depth. It also, you know, altruism, one of the components of altruism is compassion. You know, uh, older people, if they are healthy, have learned how to successfully uh, regulate their emotions. And as a result of that, they can actualize a kind of universal compassion where uh, they um, uh, feel the truth of the suffering of the world and they have the capacity to respond skillfully or to uh, you know, be a presence in the world of equanimity. How do I maintain active engagement in an external world while I'm focusing towards inner peace? You know, I, I, I don't see the, the passion of life and the quiet reflection that, that characterizes uh, monastic engagement as really being at all separable. Um, you know, if, 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 we, if we look carefully at, at what the, um, uh, say, the monastic life is about, uh, it's really about fierce engagement with the, the stream of experience, fierce engagement with uh, what, what's here right now. What you have to do is learn to live on two levels of uh, consciousness at once. The, the passionate one on this level and the witness or the, uh, the uh, the spiritual one. The first thing I would say about wisdom is that it's not something you can have. It's something you can become now. And the way you become it now is you practice to become it. And the way you practice to become it is that you use your intelligence to learn from your life experience. I think that our own uh, respiratory process is a wonderful metaphor for um, what it is to have a life that is outward directed and a life that's inward directed. I think many um, older people uh, uh, appreciate solitude but do not appreciate loneliness and are not nourished by loneliness. Can you offer us any secrets for wisdom in aging? Pay close attention, learn what you can, let go of what's over, and keep on moving. I think it is the sense of being a part of something larger. Um, that is expressed in many different kinds of religious language. But that one is a part of something larger which continues. Realizing that, that um, uh, there is enormous value for, for carving that time and space in, in one's life to quiet down and, and watch the, the, the stream of what's going on moment to moment. Uh, that that's worth taking advantage of. 
come to the place that you understand to be your truth. This is going to be the greatest gift. There's no question. And if, if you're going to die, do it as a soul, not as an ego, because the ego is, is, is part of the incarnation and the, it goes. If there is a secret, the secret is that I am God and that you are God. There is that sense that we are, that our ego is so supreme, our monadic uh, life is so supreme, that that's a false thing. And all the mysticisms have pointed that out. And unless I get to the place to say that I am physically a cell in the, or, in, in the organism of, of the planet. You know, I, I like to think uh, of uh, this sort of secret of how to live your life uh, better uh, comes down to three words. Appreciate your life. Appreciate your life. And create the conditions where that can flourish. You can begin to develop your inner life at any age. Now, appreciate your life. Come home to who you really are, to what this is, this life. I want to just finish with a quote from uh, Rilke. Um, that I, I, it's, I appreciate these words so much. The, the love and death are the great gifts that are given to us. Mostly they are passed on unopened. The call is to open up the treasure box of love and death. Now. Do it now.